Kick drum versus bass guitar. How do you get them to stop fighting each other within a dense heavy mix? And how do you get them to stop stepping all over one another? Let's discuss. So before we dive into today's in-depth tutorial and to the point tutorial, I just want to let you know that the one thing I hear over and over and over again when people send me their mixes to review is that so many home studio owners just don't have a fundamental understanding of basic EQ and compression. And you need to understand EQ and compression at its most basic form in order to produce professional sounding mixes. Now to help you out with this, I put together something called the Crisp and Clear Heavy Mix Formula. The Crisp and Clear Heavy Mix Formula is a straightforward PDF guide that contains all of my starting points for EQ and compression for all of the main instruments within a heavy production. It also includes clickable links to private tutorials for each of these instruments, as well as a multi-track download so you can mix along with me and work with the exact same files that I'm mixing in the tutorials. The Chris McClear Heavy Mix Formula is absolutely free right now. There's a link below in this video's description. You could have instant access and start producing better results with the gear and plugins you currently have. I want you to produce better sounding music immediately and this powerful tool will definitely set you in the right direction. So the one question I get all of the time is how I get my kick drum and bass guitar so crisp and clear in my mixes without them fighting one another. People often bring up things like multiband compression or sidechain EQ or actually sidechain compression. I don't really use any of that. And to be honest with you, those are great tools, don't get me wrong, but most mixers just use basic common sense EQ techniques to create space and separation with these two low-end instruments. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. You do not have to make your life complicated. It is extremely straightforward, and I'm gonna dive deep and show you exactly how I EQ my kick and bass guitar to get them to fit well together within a mix. And you don't need any fancy EQ plugins. You could use a stock EQ plugin. It'll work just fine. So I have an audio sample pull up here. Let's take a listen to it and then let's dive deep into my EQ and what's going on behind the scenes. Let's check it out. As you can hear, the kick sounds super fat, super punchy, but the bass also sounds super fat and super punchy and it fills out the low end quite nicely. So the question is, how are these working so well together? Am I using sidechain compression and ducking the bass out of the way? Or am I using some form of MS processing or some expensive plugin? No, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just using some common sense EQ techniques that you could achieve with any EQ plugin. Let's take a look at my kick drum. So as you can see here, I'm allowing all of the low end to exist in the kick drum in the subs. I am rolling off all frequencies below 30 Hertz or 40 Hertz on my drum submix, but that's only affecting the kick drum, not the rest of the drums. I roll off frequencies way higher than that on the rest of my drum kit. The key here is that on my kick drum, again, I'm allowing those frequencies between 30 to 70 hertz to exist to really shine in that range. And then on my bass guitar, if we look here, I'm rolling off all frequencies below 70 hertz. So all of those frequencies, those super duper deep subs uh, are open for my kick drum. That's it. It's as simple as that. You do not have to make your life complicated. And if you hear these two instruments working together in solo, They are not fighting. Another tip here is nothing else in my mix is existing in this range, in this deep sub range. The guitars are high passed way above this, snare drum way above this, cymbals, vocals, everything else is high passed at least above 80 hertz or 100 hertz. So the only two things that exist in this deep range are the kick and bass. And the only thing that exists below 70 hertz is the kick drum. 
Now, a question that people often bring up is, well, what happens if you flip it around? What happens if you let the bass guitar sit deep in the subs and the kick drum above that? Well, I have some settings here pulled up. So right now, uh, as an example, I have my kick drum rolled off. All frequencies below 70 hertz are rolled off. And then for my bass guitar, I'm allowing all those deep frequencies to exist. Um, let's hear how that comes across in the mix. I'm not really a fan of this. Maybe for less heavy genres of music like indie pop or something like that, this might work in certain situations. But for metal, for me, I like to feel the kick drum. So as you can hear, it makes a massive difference in the deep subs. Uh, with the way that I prefer to EQ it, you feel the music more, at least in my opinion. And the bass doesn't take a hit. In my opinion, frequencies below 70 or even 60 hertz on a bass guitar don't really do much. But the inverse is true for kick drum. I love that 40 hertz to 50 hertz range on a kick where you feel every single kick hit. It adds power to the mix, in my opinion, and it just keeps things clear. And again, like the bass guitar and kick drum are working together and doing their job in the low end of the mix so everything can have that balanced, clear, and crisp sound. So as you can see, this is not rocket science. You do not need an expensive plugin. You do not need to go out and spend a million dollars on outboard gear or expensive gear at all. All it takes is a stock EQ plugin within your DAW to accomplish exactly what I've demonstrated in this tutorial. And I'm curious to know, is this the way that you're currently EQing your kick drum and bass guitar? Or is this new to you? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion and what you've been up to in your home studio. And again, I want you to achieve better mixes with the gear and plugins you're currently using. And that's why you could have direct access right now to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. You get a straightforward PDF guide that contains all of my EQ and compression starting points for each of the main instruments within a heavy production. You'll also have direct access to private tutorials for each of these instruments, along with a multi-track download so you can mix along with me and utilize the exact same files that I'm using in the tutorials. For the time being, the crisp and clear heavy mix formula is absolutely free and you could have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you can be notified every single time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things Metal Rock production. Till next time, happy mixing.